Thank you so much to the Director General, Mrs. Temis Christofidou, for your opening words. We will now move into the first panel of the transformation potential of European universities. I will pass the word over to my colleagues, Jade and Melanie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you're most certainly welcome to the first panel this morning. My name is Jade Fines. I am a student at Limerick Institute of Technology. And with me sharing this panel is the lovely Melanie, um, a student of Wallerberg University of Applied Science in Austria. Uh, to start off, our keynote speaker is Sophia Eriksson Watershoot, Director of Youth Education and Erasmus Plus of the European Commission. Mrs. Eriksson Watershoot will launch this panel about the transformation potential of European universities. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to the Pod Agency and thanks a lot to RUN EU for holding this conference. It's really a pleasure for me to address this panel on the transformational potential of European universities. As just mentioned by Director General Themis Christofidou, she said that European universities are highly ambitious alliances. But perhaps a question, in what way? Well, they have the potential to first of all trigger strong, in-depth, structural and systemic cooperation between the partner institutions. And at the same time, they have the potential to really bring together all their missions. So education, research and innovation, and also the service of society. And I think we could claim that they are the most ambitious alliances in Europe and possibly in the world in terms of a level of trust and understanding between the higher education institutions, in terms of quality, and also in terms of scale. And that's why we should expect big impact and we should expect inspiration for the whole edu higher education community. And that's why we can expect them to lead the way towards future-proof and resilient higher education institutions as Director General Christophe uh, mentioned. We set very high ambitions since the start and we co-created that level of ambition. We actually agreed that we should move towards universities where students can build their own curriculum and where students can choose which course to follow in any partner of the Alliance. And we agreed that we want truly European inter-university campuses and that it should be possible to get a European degree. We also agreed that we should move towards higher education institutions where students, academics, researchers, companies and cities can work together on uh, transdisciplinary challenges and that they can develop new knowledge and solutions together. And clearly, this is the best way to bring growth and innovation in the regional ecosystem. But no surprise, building such alliances takes time and there is still a long way to go. The Commission communication on achieving the European education area by 2025, it was released in September last year. It set out some ideas for the next steps and it proposed to establish a policy framework allowing for seamless and ambitious transnational cooperation between higher education institutions in Europe. And it proposed dedicated work and initiatives that will go in the direction of the level of ambition we have set ourselves. It's clear that each institution and every system will be engaged to bring, well, to bring about collective progress so that learning, teaching, and doing research in Europe means working across disciplines, across languages, borders and cultures. And actually that this becomes the new normal. To go in that direction, we do need collective efforts by the whole higher education community, by member states and by the European level. And that's why the Commission communication stated that this policy framework will be co-created together with the higher education sector and member states. And we do hope that this will build ownership at every level and act as a kind of engine to drive the process forward. 
So therefore, I'm here today to listen to you. Because to realizing their ambitions, the European Universities Alliances, they need an enabling environment at all levels, not only at their institutions, but also at the national and European level. And to date, we can observe and we see that too many alliances still face hurdles when implementing their deeper and more ambitious cooperation. And we hear obstacles that are linked to the pooling of uh, courses, including uh, accreditation and uh, quality assurance, and, uh, and, and moving towards joint European programs is a challenge. We hear obstacles linked to the introduction of uh, new flexible learning paths, hurdles linked to automatic recognition of study periods abroad. There are still hurdles linked to a seamless and embedded mobility opportunities within study programs and clearly obstacles when it comes to sharing of human, digital and physical resources and infrastructures. So these are just some examples where cooperation is still not as easy as it should be. That's why we expect European universities to act as a catalyst for change for the whole higher education community. And we expect them to show as concretely as possible to member states where the hurdles are. Because only if we have that understanding can we find solutions. Now, of course, the pandemic came in between all this. But perhaps this is, after all, a, a kind of golden opportunity to enrich our understanding of the real obstacles and the real solutions. And in any case, we all need to work together be it the European universities, stakeholders, member states, and the Commission, on these possible solutions that will benefit not only the European universities, but the entire higher education sector. So each, at our own level, need to make progress. And we would therefore call upon member states and universities to be creative and concrete when looking for these solutions. At European level, we do our best to support the process with the aim of easing transnational cooperation. And some examples. First, we will explore the feasibility of a European degree that could provide a, a framework to remove a red tape for the delivery of joint or double degrees. This is clearly uh, linked to a well-functioning and automatic degree recognition system along trusted quality standards. And secondly, we will explore the feasibility of a legal statute for alliances of universities, such as the European universities, in full respect, of course, of institutional autonomy and the competencies of member states in the field of education. Thirdly, we will be co-creating together with all of you a European approach to micro-credentials. And we hope this will widen learning opportunities with more flexible and uh, more modular learning and it will strengthen the role of higher education in making lifelong learning a reality. So if you want such micro-credentials to be useful, be it to students to complement their degrees or to professionals to, uh, to uh, upgrade their career, uh, their career moves, it must be widely recognized and quality assured. And that's where our facilitating and supporting role with the EU is most valuable. Connected to this point, is the green transition and the higher education sector's contribution to the European Green Deal and the Sustainable Development Goals. And I'm really proud to say that all 41 European University alliances are contributing to this global goal. They develop whole institutional approaches, they integrate progressively education for environmental sustainability across all levels. We see examples that they boost the professional development of teachers, create opportunities for students to become change makers themselves and devise plans for green campuses. So to further promote and support this key societal transition, the Commission will propose a Council recommendation on education for environmental sustainability and an accompanying European framework on climate change and sustainable development, both by the end of this year. So now let me conclude by thank again the Portuguese Presidency for prioritizing the European Universities Initiative. I would like to say that you are leading the way in the run-up to Council conclusions on European Universities to be adopted by 
ministers of education next month. And you succeeded in maintaining the high level of ambition for the initiative. And this is very much needed if we wish to maintain the strong momentum and see a breakthrough for an enabling environment for European universities and for higher education in Europe more broadly. So I'm looking forward to hearing your views today because to transform higher education in Europe, we really need to do it together. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Eriksson Watershoot, for your very inspiring words. Um, I'm now going to pass you over to Melanie to begin the panel. Hello. Uh, to open the discussion, we would now like to introduce Marius Martinez, Vice President for International Relations of the University Autonoma de Barcelona in Spain and President of the ECIU European University and ask him as coordinator of the ECIU, can you please share with us your vision on how ECIU is working on promoting the so desired transformation of European universities? Yeah, thank you. So, hello, dear colleagues, dear friends, a warm welcome from Barcelona. And thank you very much for inviting us to give our reflection on this important, very important conference, in fact. Being the first speaker in the panel, I have the possibility to set the scene. And that's good, because I would like to propose a very tiny, a small but important change to the focus of this panel, the transformation potential of U European universities. Because today, as we see it, the time to talk about the transformation, transformation potential of European universities is behind us. In fact, we hit the ground running a year and a half ago, and the huge financial challenges and the COVID pandemic uh, made us only more determined that change is needed in, European, in Europe's higher education. So we must not only talk about potential today, but we must show our first results. European Universities is an initiative about uh, connecting universities among them and with their uh, ecosystems. And it's also about working together, solving uh, in collaboration with the various stakeholders what worries us and affects our society's welfare and development. In ECIU University, currently 289 students are learners are working on 26 challenges nowadays. While we are talking here today, they are solving urgent societal challenges, creating societal impact and making the world a better place. I am a, a proud president on <laughs> talking about that. So we are not replicating national universities at the European level. Instead, we are creating a European ecosystem where our learners are free to pick and choose the micro modules they need, building a unique and personal learning passport that is closely linked with Europass. In this way, we are piloting new educational concepts while bringing well-known European frameworks and concepts such, uh, such as uh, the European standards and guidelines and the European approach to micro-credentials to the next level. I fully support the contribution of Sophia Eriksson Watershoot. European universities are the test beds for innovative educational concepts, of course. And in that sense, ECIU University is the first European university without degrees. We are paving the road of the micro credentials movement. Furthermore, ECIU University is building Europe's first extended reality campus, providing new standards for instant natural interaction where our students, teachers, staff, researchers, and stakeholders from all our 13 countries will work together in multiple realities. However, the elephant in the room must also get a name. I also mentioned the lack of funding in my introduction. I did some calculations and I can inform you that the 5 million we received from Erasmus Plus is only 15% of our total investments. Not an easy situation to be in, having the national budget cut in mind. Moreover, our ambitions stretch until 2030 and beyond, but the European funding is not ensured for after the next year, although we have, we have heard today that there's going to be funds on that. But let's put it black and white. We cannot use our students as a test case. We need clarity now. I would like to thank Portugal uh, for putting the European Universities Initiative high on the political agenda and member states, I'm talking to you now, use the political momentum 
to European universities have. And please swiftly commit yourself both at the national and the European level to the next phase for the rollout of the European Universities Initiative. Thank you so much for your, for your kind attention. Thank you, Mr. Martinez, for your statement. And with that, I would like to give the word. Uh, would like to give the word to Jade. Uh, we would now like to listen to Daniela Trini from the University of Maastricht in the Netherlands and director of YUFE Alliance. Trini, would you like? We invite you to. We have a question. What is your perspective on the transformation potential of European cities? Good morning and thanks, Melanie, for this introduction. I would like to thank uh, the organization for inviting uh, me to contribute on behalf of the Young Universities of the Future of Europe Alliance to this very important panel. And I would like to echo Professor Martinez uh, in his statement that the time to discuss the potential of our alliance is indeed behind us and that in only less than a year and a half uh, our alliances has, have made major progress and that the momentum we have created is actually very visible because we are discussing this here today. So this has become a very important issue uh, and an opportunity that is clearly seen as such across Europe. What, we, uh, what I would like to stress today is that the progress we are making and the transformation that we have set in motion are actually happening at an even higher pace than we had foreseen. Students, staff, executives, and stakeholders outside the university see a great value in the effort we have initiated together. So everyone is really contributing and keen to see our momentum uh, growing. And in this regard, I would like to say that we are very aware with the other 40 alliances that we are the first alliances. We are seen maybe as privileged uh, consortia that can experiment with something new. But instead, we also would like to emphasize, and I think my colleagues from the other alliances here today, uh, I hope they will agree, we feel the responsibility, the responsibility that pioneers carry when they are opening the way for everyone else. And the way we are opening is the one of the future of European universities. Um, like uh, Professor Martinez did, I will also offer some examples. But before that, let me introduce you to the concept that we try to pursue in UFE. We have a vision of a student-centered and socially engaged European university, where inclusion and excellence go hand in hand to deliver high quality yet accessible transnational education, science and innovation with true societal impact. The first element that we bring together to achieve this uh, aim is the geographic diversity, the cultural diversity, diversity in expertise, in practices, approaches that the 10 partner universities of UFE bring to this partnership. And their uh, uh, wealth is enriched by the experience, the perspective of the four non-associated partners from the world of work, from businesses, NGOs. So in order to build a socially engaged university, university need to work with society. And this is something we have been doing from uh, the very beginning. Thanks to the effort that everyone has put in the initiative, we have been building the first educational program that will optimally support not only our students as academics or future academics, but as future professionals, supporting their own employability and the opportunity uh, to have accessible lifelong learning. So to give you some examples, what are the things that have happened? What is the transformation we have produced across the institutions that are part of the Young Universities for the Future of Europe. In education, already since July 2020, we have launched two different uh, youth open programs that are programs that bring together complementary courses from all partner universities and allow the first students that are co-pioneering with us, this European university, to build their own curriculum. And they can choose currently from uh, beyond 
four, out of beyond uh, 400 courses and uh, more than 60 language courses. Of course, not only the first more than 200 students that are in this pilot have the opportunity to experiment, work together, learn at a transnational level, but also all the staff, academic and non-academic, that is involved in, in the initiative is uh, building with us how we are going to work together in the future also uh, in, a, in a new setting that it does not exist yet. Because of the pandemic, one of the elements of our alliance, the digital side, uh, has been even pushed further and accelerated. So our uh, Youth Alliance has already launched at the end of last year a Youth Virtual Campus with the first student portal that supports our learners currently in carrying out their, uh, for now, virtual mobility and transnational study experience. And this environment will enable research cooperation uh, cooperation with external stakeholders and interaction and uh, collaboration with the citizens as well. So the wealth, the diversity that we have collected and the enthusiasm, the commitment uh, is also something that we cheer and we acknowledge. And this is why for UFE, for our alliance, diversity and inclusivity are also at the very core of, the, of our mission. And in this area, we have already set out a strategy, concrete actions, uh, not only for staff and student training and support, but also to stimulate reflection and action and awareness at all levels of our uh, alliance. Of course, this all is possible because executive staff, students work side by side, co-creating our European University day after day. And we are uh, really uh, pleased to have executive support from all the institutions. And the executives uh, of UFE are steering the developments strategically, but also offering their support day after day. I would like to conclude to say that true innovation and transformation that we are delivering and we will continue to deliver will need to be upscaled internally as well as to be disseminated externally. But in order to deliver on what we all are dreaming of, European universities alliances need continuity in funding, ideally the possibility to work on the basis of programmatic funding so that we can push forward the things that are successful and the ones that are relevant for our students, researchers and society. Innovation in the legal and regulatory frameworks that are of relevance for European universities and for our missions. And last but not least, a concerted effort of both European and national level across all member states. Thanks a lot for putting this topic today uh, on the agenda and for uh, giving us the opportunity to discuss with you our experience and the challenges together with solutions we have in mind. Thank you very much, Mrs. Trainee, for your words. Uh, we will now give voice to Cho Rocha, President of the Polytechnic of Porto in Portugal and Coordinator of the Athena European, European University. Mr. Rocha, what's the perspective of Athena as an European University and how are you planning to transform higher education within Europe? Good morning and thank you very much for inviting us to this panel. Athena stands for Advanced Technology Higher Education Network Alliance, and its main focus is inclusive green digital, digitalization of societies, meaning supporting the Society 5.0. Athena was approved in second poll for European universities and will proceed with two different scopes. First one will be on education. One of the main innovations of Athena to transform higher education is related to competence clusters, enabling flexible, open, and individual learning paths, advancing lifelong learning, simplifying and extending reskill and upskill opportunities for working age population, 
promoting effective response to fast changing labor market needs, creating a framework able to develop on demand training tailored to the specific needs of a single organization or person, and opening new markets, new markets for higher education and a more effective offer to society. All of this will be supported by an embedded mobility culture, physical, virtual, and blended mobility, mobility windows, international multicultural teams to promote equity and overcome barriers to international mobility, and also shorter mobility periods abroad, blended mobility, and any other paradigm that contributes to tear down barriers to mobility and promote equity and equal opportunities to all will also be implemented. The second scope will be on the society, promoting research and education synergies, promoting challenge-driven research and cooperation between higher education institutions and businesses, bringing students to research activities to offer immediate research and development power to small and medium enterprises, multidisciplinary teams of students to deliver proofs of concepts in short time, implementing the convergence of the priorities established by the smart specialization strategies in the seven European regions covered by Athena, mainly on the field, in the fields of smart cities, smart buildings, ICT in energy production, and ICT in tourism. Creating bridges between cultures, promoting extracurricular and volunteering activities to place students in direct contact with local communities, and finally, promoting cultural awareness. To achieve these goals, that will be supported by micro-credentials as a tool to open education up to more people because of their flexible and short-term nature, virtual classrooms and multimedia labs to facilitate virtual and blended mobility activities, creating a common infrastructure on top of members' legacy systems to simplify administrative procedures and promote transparency to stakeholders, students, staff, companies, and civil society, blockchain as the European student card in the Erasmus without paper, Professional marketing of education, developing the Athena brand in the worldwide higher education scene, creating an observatory of the higher education market, looking ahead to anticipate five to 10 years of higher education trends, and finally, creating common quality recognition of educators. So this is the way that we are planning, that we are planning to transform higher education in Europe. Let's hope that we will get all the resources needed to achieve uh, these goals and to really contribute to change the landscape of the higher education. Thank you and congratulations to Polytechnic of Leiria for the organization of this event. Thank you, Mr. Otto. We would now like to introduce Rui Pedrosa, President President Technical of Liria in Portugal and coordinator of Run EU in Unity. Mr. Pedro, so your institution is coordinating an alliance composed of higher institutions around the world. How do you plan to higher education within Europe? Thank you for the question. I want to greet everyone. Uh, good morning. It's, uh, to, it's great to be here representing the Regional University Network. It's great to learn to more about uh, the other uh, European uh, universities. In fact, we have several things in, in common, um, several areas and strategies, but a, a lot of uh, complementary um, ideas. So, first of all, the Regional University Network is an alliance with eight small and medium universities from Portugal, Ireland, the Netherlands, Finland, Hungary, and Austria, which are global, but uh, all of them have a, a high focus on regional um, engagement and development, mainly through research and innovation with impact at the service of society for a societal transformation. 
This was the starting uh, point for the construction of several distinctive activities, which uh, we, 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 we really believe on that, such as the creation of the Future and Advanced Skills Academies, which will have as main objectives the design and delivery of innovative and new pedagogical models and practices, as well design and delivery of programs linked to the development of the skills needs for the labor market and skills for the future. Another strong idea of our European University is uh, built short advanced programs, which uh, of course are linked to micro-credentials concept that will support a more flexible learning pathways with more modular approach inside the degrees for the short cycles to the PhD degrees. These short advanced programs will facilitate the collaboration between teachers and the researchers supported by face-to-face -face activities in a short period of time. The short advanced programs will work as blocks that will be used for the construction of the European degrees, degrees both joint and double degrees, but also will be critical for the reskilling and upskilling strategies. Several of these activities and strategies will be driven and stimulated by embedded mobility opportunities. We will have more than 2,000 mobilities during three years, which include more than 1,600 mobilities for students. In line with this idea, another distinguished activity will be the co-creation of a European Center for Innovative Mobilities. Finally, we will want to connect the eight regional innovation ecosystems by the construction of the three European innovation hubs in, t in three main areas, as mentioned in the open uh, session this morning. The future industry and sustainable regional development, the bioeconomy, and the social innovation. Inside of these European innovation hubs, we will have thematic short advanced programs, thematic European degrees, thematic research projects inside the RUN Discovery Program, as well the main stakeholders, which are um, our uh, associated partners for all the regional innovation ecosystems. Last but not the least, our plans will for sure transform the higher education in Europe because we have a huge engagement of our students that will co-create the future of the regional university network. The students will participate actively, not only on the pilots associated to the short advanced programs, to the European degrees and inside the run discovery programs, but also will participate in the student advisor board that will have 15 students from each university, 10 European and five international students, which will have a lot of activities that will stimulate the multilingualism and the multiculturality. All of that uh, agree with the idea that our students, the students of Regional University Network, will inherit the future and this conference, which has a huge participation, participation of our students, including the, the moderation of the, the panel discussions, emphasizes that vision. As uh, the other colleagues uh, said, we really need to achieve these main objectives, this, a strong engagement and support that we have now, fortunately, for, from the European Commission, but also from the regional uh, fr from the regions of the state members, from the member states, to really achieve these long-term visions. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Pujasa. Uh, we would like to give voice to Anna, Anna Lea Clays Kulik now from the UA European University Association. Ms. Clays Kulik, can you please give us some insights on the work UA's University Without Walls, a vision of 2030, is doing with the European University initiatives? 
Yeah, hello. Um, many thanks for inviting me to participate in, in this panel and to share a few key points from EOA's perspective based on EOA's vision of universities without walls, as well as the, the perspective we have on the European University Initiative. Collaboration is key in our vision for 2030, as it is in the European Universities Initiative. So I think these two things work uh, quite well together. Um, EOA has members in 48 European countries covering the whole European higher education area, so we have about 800, and 215 of these um, are also participating in the alliances under EUI. Um, over the past year, we have developed a vision by the sector and for the sector about how Europe's universities should be like in 2030 based on contributions um, from more than 100 experts and visionaries from our member universities, from external partners of other sectors, and also our national university associations. And this vision is not a one-size-fits-all model. As we know, situations uh, of universities across Europe are still quite different. But the vision is a distillation of the main ideas and the common goals that universities across Europe want to work towards and which they see as their joint vision, despite the differences in their um, specific local and national circumstances. In the vision paper, we've identified seven major challenges from the university's perspective. They very much square with the broad societal challenges, first and foremost being the sustainability challenge as the overarching one and things and the change being accelerated by the pandemic. At the backdrop of the, these challenges, we try to set out a positive normative vision of Europe's universities for 2030 with three major goals, openness, sustainability, and autonomy. In the vision, we see Europe's universities as agile and collaborative institutions open to society and to the world and grounded in academic core values of institutional autonomy academic freedom for the individual and respect for evidence, scientific rigor, integrity and ethics. Collaboration is very much key in the vision at various level and universities have done this for a long time already in different formats, um, be it between universities in one country or in one region with other partners, transnational across Europe or globally. But the European Universities Initiative is a new and a great opportunity for those universities that wish to collaborate more deeply uh, across borders in Europe and also maybe once beyond. Um, in, we have done last year with our members a survey where we got responses from 219 universities from 34 systems. And the results show very much that they many of them see uh, the European Universities Initiative as a good way to enhance collaboration and first and foremost do this to enhance the missions, the quality of learning and teaching being coming up as the first one in the results. Nevertheless, uh, the universities also see challenges such as those that we've already heard about uh, this morning the need to um, make this, the alliance sustainable in the long run to provi provide a substantial amount of co-funding, but also overcome many legal and administrative barriers. And um, this points to some systemic issues that are known for a while already in the framework of the Bologna process or the European research area as well. As well. But we think that the enthusiasm and the urgency created by the European Universities Initiative should very much be used because it brings new attention and it also shows that these challenges are even more when you want to engage in deep multilateral col collaboration. So I would like to echo what Marius Martinez from ECIU said before. Member states have given the European Commission a mandate to foster the emergence of these alliances and universities are very much engaging as we've seen uh, from the various contributions already this morning. But now it's time for member states to deliver as well and work together with universities on removing those barriers that they can work on uh, to do and very much try to work to 
uh, system level transformation. So the ultimate goal should be um, to work towards removing these barriers for universities also beyond the alliances and try to create a level playing field across Europe. Uh, the alliances can be test beds for experimentation of new approaches as long as it fits their specific goals of their collaboration and we should very much try to keep things flexible and bottom up and not overload them with policy um, level demands too much. So university autonomy in this context is very much key. And when we try to develop policies at European level for all universities, then the evidence we use for this should also be broad, coming from the alliances, but also coming from universities uh, that are engaging in other types of collaboration. All of this needs time. We've heard this already as well in the keynote speech from Sofia eriksson Vadeshov this morning. So time is, is very important for deep collaborations to grow and be fruitful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Klaes Kulik. We would now like to invite Stefan Luik to speak, President of Eurash, European Association of Institutions in Higher Education. Mr. Luik, share with us the role of Eurash in transforming European universities. Yes, well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting Eurasia to um, uh, contribute to this uh, panel and to this uh, conference, very timely conference too, it is. Um, as you probably know, Eurasia promotes a vision of a future higher education that is open, flexible, that fills diversified missions, and of course, that reflects and answers to um, society's needs. So, of course, we believe uh, that's our core uh, mission. We believe that uh, universities of applied sciences, the colleges, the polytechnics, generally professional higher education can serve their regional ecosystems and their, in their expert capacity uh, by way of a network of strategic partnerships. Um, of course, we immediately identified the European Universities Initiative as a major meaningful initiative for identifying new approaches, new patterns and models for higher education, research, innovation, and indeed support to regional and local communities. Um, Eurasia was involved as a key stakeholder in the Commission's consultations from the very beginning, and thank you for that. We um, uh, advocated for diversity, a word that you've heard many times today. Uh, we highlighted our thinking on the various roles and missions of uh, UASs. Um, we drew attention to the importance of links with the world of work, links that make it possible to engage regional development. Um, we would like to draw your attention on the specific links that our sector, professional higher education, and are able to engage with local and regional um, SMEs. Um, of course, we found a, a careful ear within the Commission, but the real challenge, you know, was to encourage our members to participate. Uh, many of our members feared that it was just not for them. Uh, we targeted the second pilot call as the one our sector would score. Uh, we therefore organized a series of uh, promotion-focused events and workshops, uh, including our annual conference back in 19, in, sorry, 2019, uh, when we did, did, dedicated specific workshops uh, to um, uh, UAS alliances. And of course, we got the support of uh, the Commission's representatives to create a mix of advice, best practices on how to develop UAS alliances. So the results were for Eurasia, um, 28 UAS or colleges or polytechnics uh, took part in the alliances competing in the second pilot case, a pilot initiative. Um, we were, uh, Eurasia was, uh, an affiliate uh, partner in uh, at least two alliances. Um, we came in contact with um, 
uh, near the old pilot islands is where uh, US were involved. Um, we remain a key stakeholder partner in um, the European Commission consultations for the future initiatives. And uh, uh, you have all collective broach, collectively broached this subject earlier. Most recently, I want to um, point out that uh, on the 17th of March of this year, we launched Eurasia plat Dialogue Platform of European UAS. Um, this dialogue involves indeed um, uh, everything, every subject, every issue connected to the um, European Alliance initiative. Um, what were the uh, lessons? Uh, the lessons that we learned, what were the key issues that um, we uh, identified. So, of course, uh, ambition, enthusiasm, and bold vision are indeed prerequisites. Yet, candidates have to clarify long-term strategies and to coalesce their views, uh, including those of all partners in uh, their alliances. Um, the second point is, they have to clarify long-term funding. And as uh, Professor Martinez said, funding is, uh, well, the European Commission funding is about 15% and not more. So, uh, of course, you have to resolve the bias between, or the gap between uh, project mo mode funding and long-term commitment. Um, you have to uh, welcome funding from other sources, of course, uh, including from research and innovation uh, partners. Um, you have to, and that's been mentioned many times as well today, you have to welcome uh, and take into account um, the uh, student body in all its diversity. Uh, and of course, uh, as you probably understand, professional higher education students have specific characteristics like you know specific age groups uh, uh, social backgrounds are probably different and of course the, their mode of working and learning is uh, definitely uh, different from perhaps that of uh, traditional university students and of course it's important to um, address assess the uh, uh, mobility targets when it comes to professional higher education you have to consider uh, work-based learning issues. You have to consider the specific learning uh, features, the uh, uh, impact of uh, and limitations probably of placements, internships. Um, of course, uh, the UIS uh, welcome the fact that uh, uh, university initiatives, uh, European uni university initiatives, um, are able to um, uh, reflect the priority of professional higher education, the uh, focus on regional development, the uh, links to the world of work. Um, I, you know, I, I would like to mention, of course, the fact that uh, you have all mentioned the capacity uh, within the initiative to uh, uh, welcome enhanced cooperation and, and share expertise in the coming uh, recovery period. Um, so, uh, of course, we uh, uh, follow and, and we can only emphasize what has been noted before, like uh, the need to reconcile uh, national and European and local and regional uh, regulations uh, to enhance European level corporations and uh, local uh, cooperation within partners in strategic alliances. Um, the need to make sure uh, well ahead of uh, the start of the work, um, the, the, the issues linked to quality assurance, to uh, uh, multiple diplomas to double diplomas, uh, the uh, problems of recognitions are, are uh, of course core issues. Um, as a conclusion, I think we've been able to emphasize the uh, wealth of possibilities that the uh, European initiatives, um, European university initiatives carries with it. Um, what we uh, identified at once, like all of you obviously, is the uh, transform transformative power of the uh, uh, initiative. Um, so my final words would be 
uh, we encourage our members uh, and PHE, I mean, professional higher education generally, to anticipate, that's the first word. Uh, then second word or expression, be super strategic. Uh, think 10, 15, or perhaps 20 years ahead. Um, and lastly, of course, um, Eurasia is following closely this, uh, uh, the, the future of this initiative. Um, we uh, will continue to uh, popularize it uh, within our membership base. Uh, we will, of course, uh, add instruments like uh, our projects, uh, uh, our conferences, and, and of course a warm hello to uh, Joao here because our next conference is in uh, Porto with the uh, Polytechnic of Porto. Uh, but also we will be careful that uh, all the insight we gain, all the experience we have is translated into the uh, coming uh, um, uh, experience of, of the uh, European policies and that the Commission is well and truly able to uh, make room for this uh, and provide for this diversity, which uh, we all, of course, uh, think is, is core and key to the initiative. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lowick. Keep driving that change. So at the end of the panel, we would like to thank all the participants. It was a great pleasure to listen to your interesting remarks. We wish you all the best in an enjoyable and, of course, interesting conference. Thank you very thank you. much. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you to our moderators, Jade and Emily, for such an interesting discussion and to our panelists for such an insightful conversation. Uh, we will now have a short 15 minute recess and we hope to see you all back here at 1200 uh, Central European time.